So I had this discussion with a meat head a few days ago. As you do as a vegan. Well, I'm kidding. I don't usually do this. Well, I do get into discussions, but I try to avoid arguments since you don't get anywhere with arguing, let alone with discussion. Even though at the back of my mind I'm thinking I do not really care about this guy or gal who only cares about their taste buds. But what of the rest that might be following the discussion and wondering? Anyway, I digress. I was having this discussion, so I'll take you through the juicy parts and my brief response because the topics brought up could be discussed for ages. Valid arguments on the vegan side and ridiculous ones on the other. You know. Mr. Meathead says, I don't need to have an argument. The only reason we have huge brains to build cities and make medicine was the fact that humans add cooked meat. You're vehemently proposing an unnatural radical shift. While I appreciate your views and believe it or not, eat an almost completely vegan diet at home, cutting out all animal products entirely is almost abstract. Life is cruel. Grow a pair. First of all, this is what got me making this video. I'm not sure why, but I think it's that to me it seemed to be such a ridiculous comment. I might get into the rest of the information about out there some other time, because it shows the ignorance around. So, grow a pear. Vegans need to grow a pear? Or rather, this person thinks eating meat is done by people who have a pear? Mm, a pair... a pair of what? Oh, 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 I get it. I won't even go into the point about how sexist that is. It's ironic he would mention that though, considering the effect of meat and dairy on one's pears, according to science. We've got to wake up. I have a great deal of empathy for the public because the public can only access this information according to what they're generally being told. It takes hard work to really get behind the scenes and see what's going on. It's a heart study which appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine. 50% of children, 2 to 15 years, have fatty streaks marking the beginning stages of heart disease. Thirty million American men have erectile dysfunction. A meat-based diet doesn't just give you a heart attack eventually. It can also make you impotent. And I have found that for a lot of folks, that will get their attention, especially if you're an 18-year-old young man. The male sexual apparatus is a rather odd hydraulic system that does require a good blood flow in order to work properly, if you see what I mean. So if you have blocked arteries to the heart, the, the heart can die, but if you block the arteries to a man's private parts, uh, they don't function so well uh, anymore either. And I think that the big market we have now for Viagra and other uh, erectile dysfunction medications comes in a large measure from the fact that a lot of men are eating unhealthy foods. I'll tell you something funny. If you look in the uh, prescribing information for Viagra, it says it works better if you don't eat a fatty meal. Well, I have to tell you, everything works better if you don't eat a fatty meal and if you eat a healthy enough vegan diet for a long enough period of time, I don't think you're going to need that prescription at all. According to a recent review, the most notable development in the epidemic of prostate enlargement and lower urinary tract symptoms is the recognition that modifiable lifestyle factors substantially influence the natural history of these conditions. These are the factors associated with increased risk— obesity, diabetes, meat, and fat. And some associated with decreased risk— exercise, moderate alcohol consumption, and vegetables. Uh, just a few things have been found associated with a significantly increased risk for the disease. Refined grains, like white bread. Also eggs, 
and poultry, which appeared even worse than red meat or desserts. You know, we used to think of erectile dysfunction in young men in their 20s and 30s as psychogenic in origin, meaning it's all in their heads. But now we're realizing it's more likely the early signs of vascular disease. But even when the penis heads in the wrong direction, the heart need not follow. Atherosclerosis in both organs can be reversed with lifestyle changes. We know that a substantial body of knowledge demonstrates that the abundant consumption of food of plant origin, including vegetables, fruit, and whole grain, and the dietary patterns rich in these foods convey a markedly lower risk of coronary disease. So they tried putting impotent men on a Mediterranean diet, the main characteristics of which include a, an abundance of plant food. 37% of the men on the Mediterranean diet for two years regained normal sexual function. What about the diet appeared to do it? Improvements in erectile function was tied to five things. Increased intake of fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and essentially the ratio of plant to animal fats. Similar benefits were found for women. But if men are so concerned about their masculinity and manhood, maybe we should instead share a bit about what prostate cancer treatment entails. The prostate is situated at the base of the penis, and so when you core it out with a radical prostatectomy, you lose about an inch off your penis if it gets erect at all. Only 16% of men undergoing the procedure will regain their pre-surgery level of erectile functioning. The best way to prevent a massive heart attack, to prevent atherosclerosis, is to start at step number one, blocking the buildup of cholesterol, which is a direct result of having too much LDL cholesterol in our bloodstream, which is a direct result of eating three things. Number one, saturated fat, found mostly in meat, dairy, and eggs. Number two, trans fat, found mostly in processed junk and animal products in the American diet. Number three, the consumption of cholesterol itself from meat, dairy, and especially eggs. Elevated LDL cholesterol levels is also caused, as we've seen, by the lack of consumption of fiber, found in all whole plant foods. Since we evolved to eat enormous quantities of fiber, when we don't, our LDL ends up much higher than it's supposed to be. Mm. Manly. Isn't manly usually used to describe someone who is courageous, not scared to go against the flow, and stand up for what he believes in? That sounds like a vegan to me. Does a real man, a manly man, get his meat at the supermarket or the restaurant? Does he pay someone to kill that animal for him because he cannot do it himself? Or even watch the scene himself? Does it take a real man to actually stand up for the weak, such as the hungry, the planet? Sometimes we associate a strong person, whether it is in strength, build or endurance, as being manly or a real man. No such these cannot be vegan, right? If you are one of those men who thinks eating animal products make you manly or somehow have a pair, think about this while you are sucking on breast milk and maybe feel around for your pair. You might find that if you've grown a pair, you might need to get that checked out at a gynecologist. If you are wondering where the research is, think about this. Our hospitals are not filled with vegans. If you really think I'm wrong, then the onus of proof is on you. But since us vegans strive for compassion, I will leave a few links in the description down below to get you started off. I did this with the person who started off this discussion. Besides commenting about the fact that the links are YouTube links, what's his point? If I send the information by pigeon or messenger, would that have changed the validity of the content? YouTube is just another vehicle of communication. Had he pulled his head out of the sand, 
he would have seen all the links were referenced and he could have read the studies that were referenced himself. The deal was that I would provide him with the science and that he would do the same, which I bet he wouldn't and I was right. Today, erectile dysfunction. The leading cause of erectile dysfunction is science on the best way to reverse that cause. 30 million men in the US have erectile dysfunction. The softness of a penis can be the window into a man's heart disease because it is the beginnings of cardiovascular disease. By now you may be thinking, none of this really matters to me. I probably don't have clogged arteries. Well, if you live in the USA, quote, fatty streaks are found in the aortas of nearly all children by the age of three years old. Yeah, but aren't a large portion of ED cases psychological? Even less severe vascular impairment can delay the establishment of an erection effect. Okay, so how do you actually fix this? The best, most reliable, scientifically proven way to do it is through a oil-free vegan diet, which is shown to improve artery function and unclog arteries, reversing cardiovascular disease, and not just epidemiologically, but in interventionary dietary trials. One of the earlier studies to demonstrate this was by Caldwell Esselstyn in the 90s. But isn't erectile dysfunction just the natural course of aging for men? And then I was kind of making a joke about blood flow to the penis, but uh, when people have a bad diet, that's when they need the Viagra, right, Doc? Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Age has yeah. nothing to do with it. I thought. You know what I know, think? No, it's, it's really true. If we didn't, if, if we were eating right, we would need to be selling Cialis and all this, that Viagra and stuff like that. But and you're, you're 77. True. You don't need it, right? No. <laughs> one more significant cause of erectile dysfunction, medication, blood pressure lowering medication. Vegans have a 60 to 75% lower incidence of high blood pressure. Ironically, the number one thing between you and your manliness might be your desire to be manly. Grilling all that meat and pounding down all those barbecue chicken wings and so on. So my intention was to keep this short, because I, as I said, there's a lot to discuss here. It's a huge subject. But I just wanted to go over the ridiculousness of how people argue their bad habits. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to this channel, subscribe. And if you have friends, share.